Sponge. The six most abundant elements in living things are sponge. Sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. Of these elements though, carbon is the most important. Let me tell you why in this video 5.3 about carbon chemistry. Everything in this video really leads to one thing, carbon's versatility. And once you find out about how carbon works chemically, you'll be able to explain how diverse organic molecules can be generated from just carbon and hydrogen. You might have heard that life on Earth is carbon-based, and that's pretty much true. A cell is made up of about 72% water and 28% non-water chemicals. And of that 28% of non-water chemicals, nearly 90% of that is carbon-containing compounds. From our nutrient cycling, we know that carbon is found in the big four macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. But what makes carbon so special? The answer to that lies in carbon chemistry, and quite simply, carbon's favorable configuration of valence electrons. Carbon is the lightest element with four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. What that means is to get to the stable octet of eight valence electrons, carbon can form four covalent bonds with up to four different molecules, and this is huge in terms of carbon's versatility. To understand just how versatile having four valence electrons makes carbon, I want to consider the most simple carbon-containing compounds, hydrocarbons. But what is a hydrocarbon? Well, just like the name is trying to tell you, hydrocarbons are made of two simple ingredients, carbon and hydrogen. The electronegativity of carbon is 2.5 and the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1, making the electronegativity difference only 0.4 between them. And this also makes the bonds between carbon and hydrogen nonpolar covalent bonds. And overall, hydrocarbons are nonpolar molecules, meaning that hydrocarbons are uncharged, hydrophobic, and water insoluble. And I want to convince you that you can draw an infinite number of hydrocarbons. Yeah, you, even if you don't like chemistry that much. And that's possible if you remember a couple of simple rules. The first rule is that in hydrocarbons, carbons can form four bonds. And the second rule is that hydrogens in hydrocarbons can only form one covalent bond. That's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's get drawing. Well, let's start with hexane a straight chain hydrocarbon with six carbons and 14 hydrogens. Using those two simple rules right there, can you draw hexane? Pause the video and give it a shot. And so here's hexane, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Six hydrogens on each side makes 12 plus two on either end. That's 14 hydrogens. We're all set. If you did that, if you drew that, be proud of yourself. And if you didn't, you'll have lots more chances. So starting with hexane, you can make some simple modifications that lead to infinite hydrocarbon possibilities. The first modification is to simply add or take away carbons from the backbone. Here's our friend hexane, and if you made the backbone just one carbon shorter, well, now the hydrocarbon is pentane. A four carbon backbone is butane, three carbons is propane, and so on. And you can do the opposite and lengthen the chain as well. Seven carbons is heptane, eight is octane, nine is nonane, 10 is decane, and we could go on to infinity. And when you look at any of these hydrocarbons, those two rules are still in place. Each carbon has four bonds and each hydrogen has one bond. Instead of having a straight chain hydrocarbon backbone, you can throw a branch in the backbone and make brand new hydrocarbons. Here's hexane and here's isohexane, still a six carbon hydrocarbon. It may look, may look a little weird drawn like this, but each carbon still has four bonds and each hydrogen still only has one. In isohexane, this carbon in the middle of the branch has three carbon-carbon bonds and one carbon-hydrogen bond. To condense the structure, though, you don't have to draw all of the carbon-hydrogen bonds, and that's why this might look a little weird. 
check this out. Instead of sharing just one pair of electrons, carbons in the backbone can share multiple pairs of electrons, forming double and triple covalent bonds. Check out the example of butane, the four carbon hydrocarbon. Put in a double bond and we have butene. The position of the double bond can even change to make one butene or two butene. If you count the bonds, you'll still see that each carbon has four bonds and each hydrogen just has one. If the carbons share three pairs of valence electrons, there's a triple covalent bond and you get butyne. And the number in front just tells you the position of where this double bond is or where this triple bond is. Another thing the versatile carbon atom can do is form rings. Here's hexane as a straight chain, and now if this chain folds over and binds onto itself, the result can be cyclohexane, this cool hydrocarbon ring. Are you convinced yet? Chemistry and nature can use these two simple ingredients and these two simple rules to generate an infinitely diverse array of compounds. But imagine if you added a couple of other atoms to the party. In biochemistry, small groups of atoms can add certain chemical properties to compounds, and the groups of atoms and their properties are really common, and they're called functional groups. In this picture, we have the simple two-carbon hydrocarbon ethane, and if you swap this hydrogen out for a hydroxyl group, OH, now you have ethanol in alcohol. Swapping out this hydrogen for a sulfhydryl group gives us a different compound, ethanethiol using a carboxyl group instead COOH makes this ethanoic acid and last on here putting in amino group instead of this hydrogen makes ethylamine. I know we're bridging over into the land of intimidating chemistry but there are some functional groups that we'll see again and again and if you become familiar with these five functional groups in fact Write them down right now in your notes, especially these, this part right here. And if you become familiar with them, you'll be confident for most of what we need to know. So let's recap. Carbon is a seemingly magical atom, all because carbon has four valence electrons that allow carbon to form four covalent bonds. This ability makes carbon so versatile. And even just using two ingredients, carbon and hydrogen, you can make an infinite number of hydrocarbons just by changing the length of the carbon backbone, adding some branches instead of just a straight chain, using double or triple bonds instead of just single bonds, or turning the straight chain backbone into a ring. And if you want to break the rules just a little bit, swapping out hydrogen groups for other common functional groups creates the opportunity for limitless combinations. Now, hopefully you're feeling a little bit nerdy with your biochemistry now, and you realize that your nerdiness is just seeing a couple of simple patterns and following a couple of simple rules.